Hello. Hope everyone's having a great start to your work week. I know I sure am. The Microsoft Station video that I just put out, the most common asked question on it by far was why did I put the pocket hole screws in just a little bit, then back them out, then just a little bit to back them out and put them all the way down uh, or screw them all the way in. And the reason being is I was using my 12 volt uh, drill. I think I was using drill. I wasn't using the impact. 12 volt drill to put them in and uh, sometimes it just doesn't it doesn't feel like it's got the power to do it all in one motion so I put it in just a little bit to start the hole back it out and then drive it all the way down um, the 18 volt drill driver impact whatever that I have will do it all in one motion no problem but I typically reach for the smaller ones because they're lighter they'll do the same thing it just takes an extra step to uh, drill it in back it out drill it in no big deal um, but that's why I did it, and especially when you're not clamping them down. A couple of those I did not clamp down. I just held them in place and just, you know, finessed the screw in there. Uh, but it works, and that's why I did it. Another question was, why did I not make the bottom cabinets go all the way to the wall? And the reason being is it's, it's just a 24-inch cabinet. Uh, I'm not really losing that much space behind it because I have like a... Uh, it's about five inch or six inch box that comes out of the back wall. So from the back wall to the back of the cabinets is really only like, I don't know, six or eight inches or so, not that much at all. And <clears throat> that space is, is there uh, pretty much because I didn't want to build bigger cabinets and have to buy longer drawer slides. And also 24 inches of drawer storage in the bottom is good enough for me, but this allows me to run extension cords and wires and stuff back there. My dust collection pipe is back there, so it also gives me access to modify the system if I need to. I doubt I ever will, but it's, uh, it gives me the access to do so as well. And all of my electrical outlets on that back wall, I still had to have access to. So I tried to plan the actual boxes to miss the outlets in the wall, but, uh, you know just in case. So yeah, they, they don't go all the way to the back, but I don't think it was necessary to utilize that much space. You know, having like a 34 inch drawer fully extended or a 30 inch drawer fully extended. I don't need that much storage down there, but the main area of storage that I wanted to utilize was closer to elbow level. And that is the space that's behind the miter saw fence. This particular miter saw requires like 26 or 26 and a half inches from the fence to the wall. So that's, if, if I'm making a miter saw station on the side or if I'm making like, you know, the fence on the side for the miter saw station, then anything behind it is wasted space unless you figure out some way to utilize it. And me personally, I like drawers and that's a perfect spot to make chest level drawers, quick access drawers and a bunch of them. So there's going to be a lot of them. There's going to be three high on the drawers that are waist high and above. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to getting all this done. Now the height of the work surface, I didn't really want a lot of surface area to use as like a, like a workbench or anything. I just wanted a little bit of surface area required for this miter saw because anything more than that is just a potential horizontal surface for me to pile crap on top of. So the plenty of storage for me to put stuff away. I don't want to have a lot of horizontal surfaces to pile stuff on. I've got enough, I've got enough horizontal surfaces to work on for the time being or whatever. Um, so I didn't go crazy with the actual work surface making it into a workbench. The CNC machine to the far right, that was a last minute decision. There's actually going to be another cabinet there, a shorter cabinet, but I, uh, uh, measured the CNC machine and I'm like, oh crap, that's a perfect size for this little machine. So I'll just set it right there and help with the organization around the shop just a little bit more. So, so that worked out really well. And then uh, some people asked if there was going to be support underneath the miter saw itself to prevent sagging. Yes, I just didn't get, didn't get that far in the, in the video. Uh, above the upper drawer boxes that I put in, drawer carcasses that I put in, uh, there's going to be a sheet of half inch ply going the whole way to, to kind of make that into a shelf. And then above that is going to be some dividers. Uh, if you guys follow Ron Polk or have seen Ron Polk's uh, videos here on YouTube, then he just completed a ultimate rolling toolbox. And something that he's done in all of his other previous versions is made these um, divider boxes, basically uh, two pieces of plywood with 
uh, dados top and bottom. And then you got some like quarter inch plywood spacers that you can adjust to fit whatever tool you have. Quick access tools. And that's going to be uh, all the way across the top of this. So all of my cordless stuff is going to have its own little slot. That way it's right at eye level. It's literally at eye level for me. And I can get what I need, quick access stuff, you know, like stuff you use all the time. And visually at a glance notice if, if I have something out or where it needs to be or whatever. But that's going to be above it and separate from the miter saw station, but on the same wall. I'm going to duplicate the over the garage door storage that I did on this whole wall over here. Um, but I want to get the miter saw station done first because I can use the miter saw station to stand on to actually complete that, which will make it a lot easier to install than that nightmare was up there. So. Lots of fun plans ahead. I want to get this thing done and start working. It's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. Got a couple of pretty cool things in the mail this week. You've got mail, baby. Yeah. You guys remember my uh, big circle JB sticker that someone sent me? Well, I got a clock. He sent me a clock too. He had an extra clock and figured why not. So appreciate it. Thank you. Steve in Beaver's Woodshop. No, Steve in St. John's, Michigan sent me a Beaver's Woodshop hat. Very much appreciate it. Hats, hats and me go way back. I always nag at my wife about how many pairs of shoes she has, but then I have oh, a dozen or two hats. So thank you very much for the hat. I very much appreciate it. Thomas from Southern California, uh, him and some of his friends and neighbors began a woodworking guild or a club of sorts. And uh, he's got some stickers and sent me some. So we got the SoCal Wood Shop, Get Ingrained. There you go. SoCal Woodshop get ingrained with a bear. And then the SoCal Woodshop on the state of California. This is pretty cool. We got, let's see, this is going to be California. Uh, Alaska is represented over there. We got the state flag for Arizona. And I thought we had a couple more states over there. I don't know. Maybe I, I need, you know what, I, I need to buy a Michigan sticker. That's what I need to do. But, uh. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much. I very much appreciate it, and let's go put these up on the cabinet. You guys may or may not have noticed, but sometime around, I'm just guessing here, September of last year, uh, I quit using my lav mic. Uh, mainly due to inconvenience. It's kind of a pain in the butt to sync audio because it doesn't go right to my camera. I use my phone as an external recorder and then sync the audio. Anyway, I think it was my chisel sharpening video. It was my chisel sharpening video. If you go back and watch that and just, just listen to the audio, holy cow, it sounds like crap. All the, the bugs and the birds and the frogs and just all the animals outside are really, really loud because I, I live outside the city and out, outside, out in the county just a little bit and um, lots of wildlife out here. But anyway, it picked it up really, really bad and it wasn't really an issue over the winter time because they're kind of um, quieter, you know, obviously. So it's, it's beginning to be spring again. The birds are going nuts outside and it won't be too long before the crickets and just... Oh, it's just gonna be so loud. So I'm back to using a little lav mic. I was using my DIY little homemade lav mic and I lost it, I can't find it. So I had to pick up a little cheapo one. So hopefully it won't be as bad as it was, but that's all I got for you this week. I'm, I've got a lot of work to do on this miter saw station and record a bunch of other stuff for other stuff and uh, Business as usual. So you guys take care, be productive, and I'll talk to you later.